And good evening, YouTube. It's Karen the Wise again, and this time, as promised, here with Darkest Dungeon. So, I've been having a busy week, you know, law school and all. And assignments all over the place, writing legal memos, writing outlines, preparing for the exams that, you know, are more than a month away, but at the same time, are so terrifying that you have to start preparing more than a month out. And so I finally get a bit of rest uh, what, after 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, yeah, let's play a game. And you know, hmm, well, I'm super, sh I've been super stressed out. What kind of game should I play? How about a game in which other people also get super stressed out and then go mad? Awesome. And that brings us to Darkened Dungeon, which is a game in which you try to hire heroes to purge your estate that you've recently inherited of all the abominations that are throughout it. And these heroes, as I've said, they accumulate stress and they go mad. So completely appropriate. Anyway, it... This is one of those games where it's better to just show rather than tell. Alright, so, as you can see, I've played this game a couple times before. I've gotten a little ways into it. I'd say about mid-game. But, let's start a new game. I don't want to play on easy, because I'm not a filthy casual. I can't play on Stygian because I have not gotten good. So we gotta play on Darkest. And... You know what, I'm going to call it uh, Darkest Torts, because if I'm frank with you, Torts is my darkest dungeon. Now if you're in law school, you could probably appreciate that joke. If not, I'm sorry, but it... Be Actually, I'm not sorry. You're not in Torts. I'm quite jealous. Anyway, let's, uh, let's dive into this misery of foreseeable madness. Let me shut up so you can watch the cutscene. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steel yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Alright, and we're back. So, you may have noticed a few things during that cutscene. One, the art style for this game is goddamn beautiful. Really, I, I do truly love it. Two, the narrator for this game is also goddamn beautiful. I can't recall the name off the top of my head, but I love the man. He's great. That voice is just, mmm. Hear him say things like tenebrous and damnably transcendent. Oh, mm, so good. So good. Anyway. Every time you start up a game in Darkest Dungeon, you always start with these two guys, Reynold and Dismas. Oh, can I right-click him? Yep. They also start with these same quirks, but we'll get into that later once we get into the Hamlet. Now, I will say though, I I do dislike Re Reynold. Reynold. I, whatever. I'll say his name however the fuck I want. Mm. I hate him because of that trait. Anyway. Now, over here, on these character panels. We'll see their skills. Now these skills, I don't think they get the same ones each time. 
No, no, I'm wrong. No, the, the defaults do. The ones you randomly get do not. Ignore me. They do always start with the same skills, don't they? Yes, they do. I am a very silly person. Anyway, so we start here, and I guess we're still huddling in this carriage waiting for our loyal bodyguards to clear the way. So let's go ahead and click on this room and travel Brigands towards it. have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. All right, so we're going to keep the light on for now. I, I'm a crazy person, and I like to play a very high-risk game. That all may hear of your arrival. So you'll see me with the lights off a lot of the time. Anyway, we're in a fight. We're fighting a brigand cutthroat. Now, now I can actually explain what the fuck I meant by lights on, off. What is he going to do? Something dirty? No, 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 no. Alright, as you can see up here, it's light is at 88 right now. It's out of 100, which is the max. And you see I have plus plus dodge, plus plus scouting, and quadruple plus monster surprised. Alright, this means it's more likely that I'm going to dodge attacks. Apparently because it's bright and I like seeing in the light while everything else is night vision. Uh, plus plus scouting, which means sometimes I'll be able to reveal icons on these paths before I come across them. And monster surprise, which is obvious. They're surprised. I get to go first. It sometimes even shuffles their order, which we'll get into later. However, there is one reason why I think it's if you shift click. Yeah. You see, if I shift click and manually lower the lighting, which also happens over time, uh, I get more stress, and the dodge scouting and monster surprise has been weakened. Let's do it again. Oh, the light is fading. Ah, gee willikers, Batman. I did not know that. So now, it's more stress. The monsters have accuracy and damage, and heroes have a chance of being surprised. However, there's that plus loot. Right, if we do it one more time. There we go. Triple stress, monsters accuracy damaged, hero surprise. There's still more loot, and there's still a chance of monster surprise, which is what I want. So let's get to the fighting, shall we? Uh, this episode, it's mainly just going to be the tutorial. I'll stop explaining these as I go. Anyway, fighting. What moves you can use. Hmm. Oh, sorry. What moves you can use. Determined by what position is that character in? Positioning is like key in this fucking game. Alright, so we got Dismas here. He's super fast, which is why he's getting to go first. Now he's in position two. Oh, there's there is a total of four. Because I only have two people and he's in the back, he's in position two. Alright, so what moves can I use? Well, anything that has that sec starting from the right that second slot filled in he can use that move so pistol shot and eh, that there's another rule why i can't use that the ones i can use are open vein and grape shot blast because there's another thing these moves also can only be used on someone who is i can word Oh, my light. I'm pretty sure my light's been going down this whole time. Uh. Oh, never mind. I'm wrong. Ignore me. Uh, I can only use the move on someone who's within a certain slot. So, like, pistol shot here. You might be wondering, well, slot two's filled in. Yeah, the thing is, slot one on the other side is not filled in. Which means I can't use it on anyone. I can only use it on anyone who isn't in slot one. Which. There's only one guy over there left, so there's only a slot one. Can't use pistol shot. But we can open vein. I even gave him a debuff effect. Which is basically a poison effect. Alright, and... Same rules apply. Also, if you see, uh... You see how those two red circles are linked down there? That means it's an AoE attack. It affects both those slots at once, but... 
We're just gonna give him a smack. Oh, shit. Unfortunate. All right, I'm gonna cut you again. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. Ah, muns. I now have muns. Yeah, Kyrio, you can Finding interact with it. You can use an item test. to interact with it, which a Cal lot of ones you need home. to use an item to safely interact with something. Leave nothing unchecked. All right, there is uh, much to be found in forgotten this places. Torch real quick. Get that bonus lighting. Higher chance of surprise ambush. here. Send these vermin a message. I got surprised. This is no bueno. Returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. That means I can't pistol shot. It means I can't target the asshole in the back. Which is problematic. I want him dead. Because see, the thing is, this guy is so fast that... He takes up two slots, which means Reynold, if I wanted to smack things, only this guy in the front. So we're going to go ahead and try to stun him. Excellent. And then we're going to use Dismas over here. Masterfully oh, that crit. Mm. Uh, later on, once I've started accumulating stress, that hasn't happened here yet. Uh, crits are awesome. They reduce stress. Ah. Yeah, let me, yeah, go ahead and use the uh, aggro. And he wastes his turn getting over his uh, stun. And he gets another turn because of course he does. I mean, he's never getting another turn ever again now, but whatever. Ah, uh, this is another thing. Now, I can turn this feature off, but I won't because... I'm not filthy casual. When you kill something, it leaves a body. Uh, basic gameplay effect of this is that it doesn't make all the enemies collapse inward immediately. See, the way it used to work is if you killed someone, it'd vanish, and it would suck anyone behind them into their slot. Now, the reason why this gameplay mechanic was introduced is because a lot of enemies, elite, or, well, really, a lot of characters that are put into the back slot on both sides are put there because they have attacks that need to be from the back. Ranged attacks in particular often need to be back from the back, the uh, fourth or third slot. If you suck them forward, suddenly the moves they have left are terribly ineffective. And people would do this and then heal their whole part, spend their, a whole bunch of turns healing their party, and then then kill it and move on, having healed their whole party. Another thing would be like stun chaining, which progressively increasing stun resist were added to counter that. Anyway, um, I'm going to cut you now. Unnerved. Unbalanced. Ew. Yeah, we don't like it when the enemy gets crits. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and nuke the, the torch. The holds much worse than mere trickery and boogeyman. All right, we're just gonna stab you. I won't bleed. Ooh, his uh, stun resist wore off. This stress is nasty because it actually, it doesn't go away when you clear the dungeon. It only goes away when you send someone to a stress-reducing facility in town, which we won't have for a little bit. So I really don't want to build all this damn stress in here. Come on. Thank you. Alright, now we're just going to cut him to death. 
Yeah, I, I turned the tor torch off. I really should have waited to turn the torch off until right before I killed him, but sometimes I forget. So I decided to do it. Fuck it. Mm. Fun fact here. Ah, uh, he has one health left. I'm not even going to kill him. <laughs> because he'll kill himself. Does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Ooh, crests. Not bad. Yeah, this is why I turned my torch off. More loots. I once got accessories from here, which is great. Now, you can stay here. And I'm sure most people who play the game for the first time do, because they're like, ooh, there's that chest there. Don't do it. If that chest is trapped. You, you don't want it. You, you will not get much from it. You can, but even if you do, it won't be much. So let's just go back to town. And I'll wrap things up by explaining some of my quirks. Oh, eh, not bad, not bad, actually. This makes you great for the ruins. Okay, so this is the thing that can happen. When you clear a dungeon, you gain XP, and you might level up. If you've reached the next XP marker. And when you do, you might gain quirks. Now, let's just go ahead and return to town so I can talk about debt. Welcome home. Such as it is. So here we are, home base. Of this squalid hamlet, these corrupted yes, lands. Yes, thank you, game. They are yours now, and you are bound to them. Ah, uh, so because we can't access really anything in town right now. Oh wait, no, we can. We can. Women some and peeps. men, soldiers and outlaws, fools right, uh, and corpses. Let's just go ahead and recruit these guys. All They're always way to are us these now guys. That the road is the clear. and the plague doctor. Just. Click and drag him. What better laboratory than the blood soaked? Every time you come back from mission, this place will have more heroes in it. I, I use heroes very loosely here. More mercenaries, let's describe it like that. And we'll go ahead and go up here, click it so we can upgrade. Yep, we have enough to increase the number of available heroes. Great heroes can be found even here. Next time, the there'll be three heroes here. I could increase barrack size, but we're not going to do that yet. Anyway, let's uh, open our heroes up. Oh, not bad. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> this is this is actually fascinating. Oh, great. Your shit. So, you may be wondering. Chiron... You said you were going to go over quirks. Fucking do it. Very well. Alright, so. Quirks are divided into two categories. The good. And the bad. So. On the good side. It's, it's quirks that add nice things. Such as a plus 10% scouting chance in the wield. A 10% chance that I'll just scout out things that are in the nearby hallways. And this one I actually really like. Irrepressible. Plus 5% virtue chance. When your stress, this meter fills out, your hero's resolve is tested. Now most of the time, they go crazy. And they suffer a punishment. They, they gain a negative quirk. I believe it's for the negative, I think it's a permanent negative quirk. However, sometimes they overcome this adversity. They, they become more than they were. And they gain a temporary positive virtue. Now, however, on the other side, we've got the negatives. These usually are very impactful for your game and happen all the time. So for this guy, we've got a uh, off guard. You know, this is a traditional malice. A minus four speed on first round and minus five dodge on first round. That's actually really shit. And if this guy doesn't die or I kill him, probably gonna to wanna to get rid of that. 
Then we have the more darkest dungeon kind. The demon demonomania believes he's possessed by demons. Now, most of the manias, they typically mean that your character is obsessed with some kind of object, a curios, that they run across a curio that matches their obsession. They will immediately go up and start fucking with it. Uh, this is a very bad thing, because unlike the curio in that tutorial mission I just ran into, the, that tent, if you recall, most curios, if you interact with them without using an item, will cause bad things to happen. We don't want that. Anyway. So, I mentioned earlier I hate Reynold. 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 Whatever his name is. Okay. Uh, two reasons. Okay, really three. Because I hate all of his quirks. Positive and negative. The Warrior of Light. Plus 10% damage if torch above 75. As I mentioned, I like to play with the torch low. I, I like it. I like the extra loot. And I really, really like the extra loot. That's about it. So this is basically useless to me most of the time. God-fearing. In town, we'll only pray for stress relief. Now, these two built. Okay, this building, the abbey, and this building, the tavern, each of them has different activities inside that you can put your heroes on to reduce stress. Reynold up there will only do a single one of those activities. That is prey. And the thing is, to you do this activity, you have to lock a hero in, and you keep them in there for at least a week, which is one mission. Uh, and also, sometimes you have the caretaker wandering through, taking up slots. So if the caretaker happens to be in your only slot that you have the time for that week, you can't reduce his stress. So I hate him. Finally, fucking cut the maniac. This is objectively for me, though I, I realize I just said objectively for me. Subjectively for me, kleptomaniac, kleptomaniac is the fucking worst. That means he will just all curios. He will go up to it, take items from it, and then leave it there used. You can't use it anymore. And he's taken the items, and it's like in a hidden inventory. Because you don't get them. I hate it. I'm gonna get this motherfucker's ass killed. Alright, what color do I want him in? I like him in... Four, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just flipping through colors at this point. Because uh, I think that is actually just about all that I can talk about right now. Because I can't access anything else. And unfortunately, I, I would do another mission right now in this episode. But it w I don't have the time. So we'll just do that in the next episode. And I guess we'll wrap it up here. As always, you, you know, the like, comment, subscribe, that whole spiel. And keep in mind, if you comment, that means I have names down there to start pulling from if I decide to rename a character. Now, I mean, depending on the comment, of course, you might either get your name on a character I really like, or you might get your name on Reynold. Enough said. Anyway, I hope you guys have a less stressful time than I've had recently. I wish you all the best. Chiron out.